Boys, you guys want out? Huh? Morning, folks. Now that we have the fence up, uh, and the boys are home, we take and we turn them out, let them uh, eat a little bit of grass around here. We've got some, might as well put it to use. Um, I don't leave them out at night, I just put them out during the day when we're home, um, just so they don't overgraze. Uh, they haven't even been down to the lower bottom, they've just been eating right here around the pens, so they haven't. Um, ventured out too far uh this is about the fourth or fifth time i've let them out so um they're doing they're doing really well uh we've been getting some rain last night it rained uh in the evenings the clouds have been building up we've got a few showers but last night we really got a good rain so it's really been nice uh it cooled the temperatures off about 15 20 degrees and this morning when i woke up Instead of it being 90, uh, <laughs> it's like 85. So uh, it will get hot today, though. I've got to get everybody fed as usual. Uh, that's one of the things on a homestead that uh, is just every day. You got to make sure everybody gets fed. You got to make sure everybody has water. Uh, after that, I've got um, a leak in the camper that I'll take and I'll show you guys. I've got to take and fix it if I can. And then we'll maybe do some horse training. Got the dogs running around. Hey, Cassius. Hey, buddy. <laughs> uh, got the dogs running around. They love it. Uh, here comes, <laughs> comes Cowboy. They like being loose. They do a lot of running around, which is good for them. Um, here comes Spurs. Them two are thicker than thieves. They they uh, stick together pretty much. You won't find one without the other one, or very far away from the other one. I'm down here at the horse pens. As y'all know, uh, that's a little. His owners call him Baby Horse. I call him uh, Mudro. <laughs> but uh. He's doing really good. Been riding him. Uh, I'll show you guys some footage uh, of me riding him, hopefully today. Um, kind of what I do. Horse training is doing the same thing the same way every day. And, you know, when there's nothing new, uh, it's just like you just go out and you maintain. And that's what I've been doing with him, just working him, uh, putting him under saddle, riding him. This little mare right here uh, is new. This is a uh, project horse. Uh, everybody who watched my social media knows I had that Arab mare uh, up for trade or sale, or uh, you just got to, sometimes you got to try to do what you can do. And um, she was doing really good. Uh, a guy got in contact with me and he had this little mare and he wanted something a little bit quieter for uh, his family. Uh, they could all ride, but this little mare right here, she's about four and a half. They did have a saddle on her, but she just wasn't, she's not broke. Um, her feet's never been trimmed and she's pretty, uh, she's pretty nervous. Uh, she don't trust people, kind of has sensory overload. She'll freeze up. Uh, when you do too much with her. So every day I just been coming out here and uh, when I feed her, uh, just been petting on her, um, having her come to me and, and just petting on her and getting her used to just moving around. I mean, you come in here, I clean manure out of here and she, she's ready to jump out of the pen. So she, she really doesn't understand, you know, what life's all about yet. Uh, she, she had a foal on her. They took, and they took the foal off of her. 
uh, weaned it off of her and they traded her to me so she's going to be a uh, project horse for me for a while we'll see what she does she's a little bitty she's not she's not a big horse um she got a little old chest she's just a little old res horse and um, she's in bad need of her feet being trimmed but i've got to get her quiet and get her to where she trusts me i don't know if the trailer is uh dried out just yet i've got to get up there on the ladder and see how the roof is uh, as soon as the sun's been out for a little bit i believe it'll it'll dry it out pretty quick i need to get up there and sweep some of the water off of it so i can fix that leak and other than that uh, once i get that done i'm gonna repaint parts of the roof uh kind of seal it up uh, campers don't do well in this country and the older the camper is the worse off it's going to be in this in this heat and cold and wind and rain and yesterday we had hail uh it 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 can be hard on them so we got to keep up maintenance on that but i'm gonna get get up there and take a look at it so there is a lot of water up here and the water is leaking there's a crack right through here i don't know what this is some type of vent maybe um it's leaking around it and leaking in here and along the walls we've had a little bit of seepage so i'm gonna paint all these areas i'm gonna conk this pretty good right in here i might get a broom and keep here and sweep this off all righty folks a little bit later in the day i'm going to take and climb up here and seal up this roof uh and then i'm going to paint it and see if we can't get this leak stopped it's done quite a bit of damage on the inside and it's a pain to try and have to fix so around these get you guys into a better position here so around these flanges um this one looks to be pretty sealed there's a little bit of a a hole right here anytime you find a bubble know that it's probably leaking through there right here and water getting in under there that's where it's leaking so I've got this roofing sealant and I'm going to put a bunch of it right around here. That's one whole tube there. This may not be the way other wood people would do it. But I'm gonna do it this flange they go out on the sides and usually in the wind and stuff that's where they leak at stuff was about six dollars a tube well worth the money if it stops this particular leak so I'm gonna put down some more all the way around this. I've got another tube I'm gonna put on there. I'm putting it on there really thick because I want it to really seal up. And then I'm gonna paint my patch place and some of these 
sides here where I see it's cracked a few places. But I'm going to pay more attention to the cracks. And then I'm just going to paint this area where I patched it. It seems to be seems to be doing pretty good. Not bad. Still a little bit of water around a few places, but I'm on right here you can see there's a little seam that gets cracked. The wind blows and it moves that metal up and down and then it cracks and leaks. So I think this one, once this sets up, I don't think it'll leak. I'm gonna go get another tube and patch all the way around it. Alrighty guys, it's probably bright. I got this area covered real thick. That area over there, I did do the rest of this as much as I could along the seams. There was some seams that were cracked down there. All in all, we got this part covered. I'm gonna have to take those solar panels down um, and set them aside and wait for it to dry up. I got over in some water over there, so I stopped right there. There's some more water still standing over there. But we need to get another bucket. A squeegee would probably work better than a roller, to be honest with you. Just squeegee it on and push it into the cracks. I think I'm gonna try that next time. I could push it up against these vents a little better with a squeegee. So I'm gonna try that and see if it works. I'll let you know if I fix the leak or not. I don't know how good of a roof patcher I am. Uh, the first one held pretty good uh, for a long time. So hopefully this works. All right, got the, the roof fixed. I'm gonna grab the little horse here and we're gonna do some horse training. So much of our lives here on the homestead is just doing the same things the same way every day. Kind of like horse training. You work a horse the same way every day and eventually you turn out a, a good product. And that's the way a homestead is. If you get up every day and do at least one thing to improve the quality of life, the operational value of the of the land, then eventually you'll end up with something that's uh, valuable and, and worth owning. There's been a lot of discussion over the years about what homestead means, especially with the advent of social media and YouTube and that sort of thing and home the word home is uh, I think self-described by a lot of people because it means something to different to, to different folks but home is is where you uh, are sheltered it's where you eat um, it's also where you find refuge. It's where you can have the, the comfort and the security to grow and to become. Uh, stead, it means to establish or to stand up. Um, and in, you know, the 1800s, a homestead was a place that you you were establishing, you were making your mark upon the land uh, for future generations. Now, when we came to our homestead, uh, we were looking to get away from the rat race. We wanted to get away from working 16 hour days, six, seven days a week. That was our whole goal. And if you followed us around sometimes, uh, you'd probably get pretty bored because a lot of times we 
are just doing whatever it is we can do uh, to make ends meet all the while trying to establish uh, a place that is um, going to be comfortable for our golden years and make a place that hopefully becomes valuable to our children uh, at some point if the world lasts that long. When me and my wife first started out, um, there were a lot of times that things didn't go exactly the way that we thought they ought to. And having a refuge uh, is really important. Um, my dad had a farm, and when things would go uh, south for, so to speak, um, we could always go back home. Um, it was a it was a place of refuge where we get our feet back up under us, and not only that it was it was a place of resources. Um, if you have a, a homestead. Uh, where there are natural resources, where there are, um, you know, things that have been accumulated over the years uh, on a homestead, then you have something to work with. You have a way and a means of, of making a living. And that's what we hope to provide uh, for our, our children as they, you know, go through life. We hope and pray that, you know, they don't have the setbacks we did, but if they ever do encounter those type of setbacks and need to move back home, then that's what a homestead uh, is for. It's a, it's a place where they can come home, they can recoup, they can recover, and they can get their feet back under them and continue on with life and I think a lot of that has went by the wayside uh, I know over the years I've seen people uh, who didn't want their kids to come back home and actually you know discouraged it but if you know the the sanctity of family is to be secured future generations um, then my ceiling should be their floor where I end they should have a good start the ability to have something that uh, doesn't go away that is is there for the future generations uh, to enjoy and to embedder their lives and, and give them a a launch pad so to speak uh, I think that's what our our ancestors our, our pioneers I think that's what they they did uh, they certainly didn't do it for themselves because most of them didn't live that long so I think homesteading is about securing the future of our children and our grandchildren and hopefully our great-grandchildren if the world lasts that long I've got to go deliver a, a box to a man that uh, my neighbor up here he, he uh, needs it he wants to take and use it for a solar box put his solar batteries in inverter that sort of thing I'm gonna run that up there to him and then I've got to go trim a horse uh, down in Sanders and get it trimmed up this afternoon so i've got to get all these horses put back up get everything fed once again and go do that but uh, i'm gonna call it right here on this video but until next time remember this old world's getting crazy if you don't know which way to go commit your ways unto the lord trust also in him and he'll bring it to pass we'll see you later